If any person is recording this meeting, you must tell me now. Um, okay. Um, so, so Jim's here. Jeff is here. Gene is here. And George is here. George, you should have spelled your name with a J. It would have worked out better. Jorge? <laughs> with a J, then we'd have Jim, Gene, oh, okay. Jeff, and George. Yeah, yeah that's fine. <laughs> and Jimmy, but that's not with a J. Oh, okay, so let's uh, start with the Elm Street bus stop. Oh, first, um, um, so my name, oh, excuse me. Go, go right ahead. So, so just, I, my name is Ginny DeSorger, and I just wanted to say thank you first for recognizing me and letting me speak early, even though it was perhaps out of turn on your agenda. And I will be brief, but um, I'm on um, disability access the Disability Access Commission and also um, um, the Precinct 3 City Councilor. And we have been having issues with the, um, the residents of Elm Terrace have been concerned <laughs> since the bus stop was moved. Can you hear me? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, so the bus stop was moved onto Elm Street and um, that means that um, people would be traveling down probably about, I don't know, maybe an 18%, 15% grade to a street with no sidewalk. Um, and they're actually asked to wait on the grassy knoll there, which is dangerous in the winter time. They'd have to come out around the snow. And I had done everything in my capacity as someone on disability access and um, to see if we could move that back inside of Elm Terrace because it would be safer. And there are many people there who have mobility issues. Um, they're elder, there's a lot of elderly there and many with special needs. FRTA's answer was that many people would be making appointments. You know, they, they have the, um, you can call for a ride and do it that way, but everyone doesn't do that and they wanted to, to to take the bus and i know that this is not happening right now with covid that people are riding the bus much but um you're the you are the people that could help with that and it really is a a safety concern and i'm hoping that we could move it back inside of, of um elm terrace to the original bus stop which would just take them a I think it's four or five routes a day. It would mean that they'd have to drive back in and turn around and it would take them a couple of more minutes. But um, it, many of the people are economically challenged and have health issues and it's a safety thing as far as I'm concerned. So that was my input for what it's worth. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. We, we've talked about this bus stop in the past. Was it last year? Mm -hmm. Um, I don't remember what the, I think there was con concern about, you know, the the traffic on Elm Street being a problem and um, other issues. I don't remember, I don't remember what, what the conclusion was. Um, so. I, I, anybody... re I remember that they said they would look into it, that they would not move the route back into Elm Terrace because we had people from Elm Ter Terrace who came to uh, talk about it. And uh, I think Jenny is getting those same people now calling her and there has not been anything done to solve the problem. So we've lost Paul as our liaison. I guess we have to now go to Marlowe uh, this that's a question mm. but these people should not have to cross elm street and stand in the snow to get on a bus 
Yeah, that yes, that that seems seems right. Um, so who who controls that? So so um, if we were to speak to somebody, um, so the, so FRTA has a has a say in this, and who was it from FRTA who came and talked to us? Does anyone remember? Um, the, the bus stops recently. I, I, Laura Jordan, maybe. Do may I speak again? I'm, I'm. I can't yeah. see your faces, so I don't yes. want to interrupt. Speak up. Speak up. Okay. All right. Okay. So, um, Laura Jordan and other people that live there have spoken to me about it. Marlo Warner, who's the uh -huh. head of DPW, is aware, and I think he believes it should be back inside of Elm Terrace. I think anybody. You know, I, I think that most people would look at the situation and see that it's safe and that it belongs in there. With FRTA, they said something that it had to do with making money. And I thought, but in the end, I actually called Representative Mark, um, and it, and the mayor is aware of this, but of course, it's been an incredibly busy time since our new mayor took over with COVID, et cetera. But People are aware. I don't know who makes the final call, but I think FRTA has a lot to do with it, and I think every effort should be made to make them go in there to, right. to have them so return to the safe spot. Yeah, I think you know. I assume the police, the police could have some in, some say in it if it seemed like it was a safety hazard. Um, mm -hmm. But. Uh, so, you know, I think what we can do from our side is uh, perhaps um, to is perhaps I don't know if somebody on the commission wants to reach out to FRTA and and be one more voice to uh, to speak up for this, or and we can also of course have it in our minutes so that it gets to one more one more uh, voice to the mayor as well. Um. Hello, can you guys hear me? Yes. Yes, we can. Yes, I'm calling on my phone because apparently my mic on my computer is not working. So. Great, we can hear you. Did you want to say anything about the bus stop, George? Um, at what do what do they want to do? Add one or take one away? No. So the the issue is that on Elm Street. There's a bus stop that used to be on Elm in Elm Terrace. Um, and Elm Street, you have to, you know, if you live in the Elm Terrace apartments, you have to cross the street to stand over by the. Um, oh, across, oh, by the uh, jail. jail. The jail. Yep. And, and so, so they so. Did, 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 uh, it used to be in Elm Terrace, the bus stop, as I remember. Right. Correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so, so there's, there's, you know, um, Jenny, Jenny is petitioning as, um, to, to get it moved back into Elm Terrace or, or somewhere safer at any rate. I would, I would, uh, concur because Elm Terrace is a rather busy street and, yeah. uh, the people that would be using it, that live in Elm Terrace, they're not as highly mobile as, say, 20-year-olds are. Mm -hmm. Right. So Does anybody, agree. would I anybody be interested the, in calling uh, FRTA and putting in their, the Parking and Traffic Commission's two cents on that? Do we know, I feel like we need to know why it, it, it isn't there. Get their updated it's, opinion so we can dispute it. It's hard to say. I mean, maybe it, it from everything we've heard so far, it's, it certainly sounds like it makes sense. But I know that there's there's probably reasons why things like this are are not completely logical to the outsider's well, perspective. I think because I think what they're looking to do is uh, kind of speed up the route a little bit. Right. So if they don't have to actually turn into Elm Terrace. Um, you know, they just stop along the, the road and then continue on. Whereas where the bus stop was before, 
they had to turn into Elm Terrace, do sort of like a UE, and then uh, uh, pick people up, and then continue on, and then either make a left or right hand turn depending on which direction the bus was heading. So uh, I can see, you know, they're trying to do it so that it speeds up their travel time. But well, maybe in this can... case, I think I think safety takes precedence over over that. So, so Jeff, to your point, I think maybe we could, you know, someone could, um, you know, call and get some information from FRT about why it's like that particularly, um, and or and maybe ask them if they would like to speak to us at our next meeting or something. May I say one last thing, and then I will get off of your meeting because I have economic development. Um, may, I, may I say one more thing? So I did actually go down and meet. Is that okay? Yes. I I, I went down and met with Molly Morin, and it's Molly Morin from FRTA, who actually is not the the person who has the. There's somebody above her, and according to her, that's exactly what. And I don't know all of you. I'm sorry. But the other person just said, yes, they wanted to speed it up. And of course, time is money. And in actually every circumstance, I can understand why you would want something that was a little faster and where you might be saving a little bit, except for this one property, because it's actually many of them are disabled. And I think the rights of the disabled with those with disabilities, it kind of trumps everything. It's sort of like, you know, board of health issue. They, it is, it, it the the travel down the hill is against every ADA law that there is for there to be people to be on a busy street is unsafe, um, and. They do drop you off after you've taken the ride. They drop you off in front of the jail, and then there was a crosswalk where you could go. But where they pick you up, the only option was to be in the middle of the street, and that's where the bus driver stopped. So I did meet with them. They said that they had met with somebody at the housing authority, but none of the people that actually lived there knew that. So there was a little disconnect there and I really appreciate the work that you do and that you'll be looking into this more because I, I, I gave it my best shot myself and I thought there's safety and having more people looking into something so thank you so much uh, one quick question Jean before you leave if, if you yes. can stick on for one, one yeah. second is yes. it acceptable oh, yeah. to so is the sidewalk drop off it's not as it's convenient not as but it's maybe acceptable and if there was a sidewalk on the other side of Elm Street that they could utilize, it would be a compromise or, or is walking out of the property in the first place not acceptable? Well, it um, it actually, on both ends, I believe it should be in there. But I did speak with Milo about this because the cost of putting in a sidewalk um, is astronomical. It's $100 a foot and, um, and I've actually talk to the person who's the head of disability access in Boston on this. You're, if you change a bus stop, you are not just morally obligated, but by the Disability Act obligated to make the, the mode of, the path of travel must be safe. So it isn't just the sidewalk issue, it should be inside on both ends but it is particularly hazardous on the picking up end. It should just Got be it. inside because you sh you see the people there, they're walking from Elm Terrace, they're walking over to Foster's with their, with their walkers. You would not want somebody it, going down that steep grade towards Elm Street. Um, so, so, so Jenny, mm -hmm. would, uh, if, if, if there was a stops on Allen Street, would that work as well? You know, in um, front of in it, front of Foster's. It it actually wouldn't work as well because the sidewalk is um, destroyed along uh, Columbus Street. It's a trip hazard. Mm -hmm. I have videos of it, which I sent okay. to FRTA. 
So I feel as if we have something to do with their funding source and the state does. And I thought that's the only, you know, wherever there are people with disabilities, we have to make, you know, if that's not just a, a bus route. And I don't want them to eliminate the stop because there are a hundred people that live there. So, um, so that's, so that's yeah. my, that's the story. Uh, Jenny, uh, this is Jim Geisman. Um, your conversations with uh, uh, the people in Boston who are concerned about disabilities, is there an analogous situation there? Uh, in other words, um, you, you know, you have a housing complex where a lot of uh, uh, differently abled people live and they have to, uh, you know, walk around the block to uh, get to a, uh, a bus stop. I'm, I'm wondering what accommodations the MBTA has, has made and can we use that as a precedent? Yes, I actually have some examples of that in my disability book, but it, it must, it just must accommodate people. It's like, it, it's like the movie theater and the, the library. It has to be accommodating. Um, that's the rule. If you move the bus stop, it must be an accommodating bus stop. And, and if you'll see, if, if you walked along Columbus Street, it's not safe. So are there, do they have a, a precedent, like a legal precedent of a particular no. case? I can't no. think of one because I, and I, but I, I know that that was, um, his name is escaping me now, but he's our go-to person. He's the head of the disability commission and he assured me if you moved it, it must be safe. Yeah, I, I was, I was not concerned on that. I'll get to Gene. Yeah, I, I was not uh, referring to legal precedent, but, um, you know, first of all, any change in routes is going to change the schedules. And a lot of the schedules are printed. Uh, they have to be updated. And from the FRTA's viewpoint, it's a pain in the ass. However, mm -hmm. uh, sometimes, you know, I mean, the MBTA is a far more complex system and they have exactly the same problems. And if they can do it, than the FRTA can, and that that's the uh, you know that that's what I think would be most effective. Um, even though it's not a legal precedent, I mean, it's just hey, if somebody else can do this, why can't you? Somebody else who who has a much more complex problem, why can't you do the same thing that they're doing? That that was my point. Right. Right. Well, Jenny, we don't it seems like you have to get going. Um, uh, I'll, put, I'll make sure this is on the agenda for next meeting, uh, so we can follow up on this. And if you want to, if you want to call back, back in, then that would be great. Um, or um, if we can further, hopefully we can keep. It seems like this is a is an is an important issue, and we should keep it moving forward. So. Oh, thank you. Thank so, you. Thank you so much, and thank you for your attention to it. Thank you all for serving. All right. Good night. Now. Thank you for serving. <laughs> You're welcome. Bye bye. Have a good night. Bye. Thank you. Thanks. Um, okay, so do do people have a, any proposal about what we should do to? Is there anything we can do to move this forward? I I, I think I, we should um, make a recommendation to the FRTA and through the mayor's office stating that the bus stop should be inside Elm Terrace, wherever it used to be inside Elm Terrace, and to get rid of the bus stop on Elm Street because it's highly dangerous for the people that live in, in Elm Terrace. And they have had a over a year to correct the situation because they did come to us to discuss it. So I, I think we have to demand that they, since they did correct it, that they go back to going through Elm Terrace. Yeah, 
And I think, or, or you know, I think there, 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 there might be other acceptable solutions. But yes, I think it seems like the the the, the, the we it seems very clear that the current bus stop in that location is not right. And they haven't corrected it from the last time we complained. Right. I think that's a good angle. This has been out there for a long time. So if you're not going to fix it, you know, default should be go back to the way that it was because that seems to have worked better or do something. But right. time's if, up. If you don't have a better solution, you have to go back to the way it was. Yeah. Right. I mean, because of the, the Columbus Avenue sidewalk, I mean, that is something that could be fixed. Um, it's definitely cheaper to fix. I assume it's cheaper to fix the sidewalk than to uh, put in a new one. Um, is that Mark there on the line as well? Yeah, but he's muted. Okay. Um, I was, was wondering if you wanted to weigh in on this. Oh, he's just watching. OK. Um, I think I'm the one that's on the phone there. Yeah, you're on the, yeah, you're on the phone. <laughs> OK, so um, great. So I, it, I, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm still hung up on this thing. I mean, it, 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 even if you you fix the sidewalk on Columbus, um, you know, it's it's still a real pain to get out there and, you know, uh, reverting to the old pickup point inside Elm Terrace. I, I mean, it seems that that is the best way to handle, um, you know, the inconvenience for people who are disabled who, in fact, suffer with that uh, inconvenience every day, whether they're riding the bus or not, you know. Yeah. So I, th I, I think repairing the sidewalk is a plan B if we can't, uh, you know, reinstate the old route, at least as I understand the discussion. Right. So, Jim, I'm just trying to clear, I'm just trying to make, make sure that it's clear that, you know, the well, all we can really pressure is to say that the current one is not um is not viable and that a different solution is needed and and because they are they are juggling a lot of things so well i think you have to throw some regulations at them and basically <clears throat> tell them that uh tell the frta that they're in violation of ada codes uh, by having the bus stop where it is um, and just tell them that in order to mediate that uh, ADA compliance, they need to put the bus stop back inside Elm Terrace, probably where it used to be, as there was no problems before. Yeah, yeah. Great. So, do we want? How do we want to? Anybody have a proposal about how how we should go about doing that? Um, do we do? We could have the mayor's office issue a letter to the FRTA, and if we need to, have the town attorney throw something in there. Usually, when you throw a lawyer on something, that that tends to get things moving. Maybe, maybe that's, <laughs> but but maybe uh, the letter from the mayor is uh, see attached opinion from uh, our council about the FRTA being out of uh, out of spec uh, when it comes to Elm Terrace, and then the lawyer writes the. The you, you know the FRT yes indeed the FRTA is in is not in compliance with the you know the Disabilities Act. Left right cross punch. <laughs> um, yeah, so I I think uh, does does that seem 
reasonable. Should I put it in my in, in the notes and send a special request to the mayor to that regard? Yes, I would. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Agreed. Send her an email or send her a letter. Yep. Yeah. Great. I, I will. I will do that. Okay. Our our notes is that kind of the mechanism we. Our notes are the the letter in, in general, right? And then we could take a. Yeah, usually we have a liaison of some kind, yeah. um, who 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 is, you know, in the previous administration, they were the ones taking the notes. They were the ones setting up the meetings, um, and and that that shifted in this administration so far, um, and and so uh, so they have the notes have kind of been the the mechanism, but. Okay. Um, I don't. I don't know how effective the mechanism is, but you know, Mark has been. Uh, uh, Paul. 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 Paul has been. Uh, um, good when he's been here and good at following up. So, do you say he's no longer a liaison? Do you know that he resigned? He's no longer Springfield. Oh. So probably, oh, we, so probably we need to reach out to Marlo, who is the head okay. of the GPW, and start with him. Okay. And maybe uh, Danielle. Maybe we need to go to her because she's the one with the parking plan. Okay. Yep. So I think we should talk to the mayor's office and, and see about getting a different liaison. Right. Um, that would be the first step. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I, I did not know that. That's too bad. DPW seems to uh, chew people up and spit them out, doesn't it? Okay. Um, right. So it seems like currently we're not, we don't have a, a mechanism, but right. I'll, send, I'll send the email out and, and also go for and uh, try to get a new liaison. Did, did we approve the minutes? No. Okay. Um, I'll make a motion to approve the minutes. <laughs> Second. <laughs> any, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Okay. Aye. Aye. Well, there we got something done. <laughs> yeah, that's the freebie. So every meeting feels Wait. like you got something done. <laughs> Who seconded, Gene? You seconded? Yes. Yeah. Um, we're we're at the the public comment uh, section. Uh, Mark said he uh, is just uh, watching. I, I don't know whether we ought to offer him the opportunity to speak if he has anything to say or whether he just wants to uh, watch this. I'm sorry he doesn't have anything better to do than to watch a parking and traffic meeting, but <laughs> it was voluntary. <laughs> nothing to say and no mic. Okay. okay. Thanks, thanks for watching, Mark. Yeah. Better than reruns, I suppose. <laughs> Our ratings suck, though. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, so, let's see. Any any news on the fire station? Temporary fire station. Anybody knows? I'm on that committee, and uh, they're sending out RFPs for the covering for the equipment and temporary housing for the firemen and. They think that they will be moving in in June, May, June. Oh. But they'll probably take the parking lot offline before then to do some, you know, some structural repairs to the parking lot. And will we ever get that parking lot back again? Yes. But it'll probably oh. be two or three years before the parking lot comes back to the city. Okay. okay, so they're going to the build a building and tear it down. Yeah, well, it's it's all temporary housing. You know, okay. the 
the fire trucks will be covered by one of those dome tent things. Oh, uh-huh. and, they, and they'll bring in housing for the firemen and, and offices that'll be taken down and moved away. Okay. Oh, like temporary trailers? Yes. That's but they're good. big they're bigger and more elaborate than that. Hmm. This is at the new site? No, this is the temporary fire station for when the current fire station is torn down for the library. Well, where will that be? So where will the temporary fire station be? It'll be on the parking lot across from Hope and Olive. Okay, got it. A high street lot. Gene, is that going to take up the entire parking lot or yes. just one? Okay. <laughs> and is there any, you know, there's some grade there, some hills. Are they right. doing anything to address all that, or is that all something that fire trucks can handle? They think that they have driven the fire trucks on it, and they think it'll all be okay, and they'll do some grading if necessary. The way it will work is the fire trucks will be on the back level and the next level, and then the housing will be on the lowest level, and they will have covered walkways that go to each of the uh, domed things, and and so anyway, they're sending out RFPs to get bids to see what they can get. Is there, Is there any, any, one because so it sounds like it's it's kind of got footprint, but if if the I guess we would need to make an assumption that we're going to get that parking lot back, yes. and it might or may not be in the same form as it is today, if there was a way for any made lot to set it up for the fire station to also be the sort of thing that would make it a better parking lot or a better whatever it wants to be next. Well, the, right. the deal is that they will restore it back to a parking lot when the firemen leave to go to their new home. Do, do, does it want to be a parking lot again is another question. That part I don't have an opinion on. I'm, I am being told by the mayor's office that there is plenty of parking and we do not need to worry about parking in Greenfield, period. Yes, my, my point, Bosch, maybe it was your point too, but I've always thought that was a wonderful development site. And if, I mean, obviously, desirable parking spot too, but if, if it's getting regraded, for example, in, in certain parts, it would be nice to do that so that it is cheaper to develop in the future to right. make that a more feasible proposition. Right, I agree. And, and they've, they've got to run new utilities. I mean, power, sewer, yeah. water, and, and you know, that, that speaks to what, what Jeff was saying, is there, you know, that, an investment in, in putting that stuff in, um, you know, is there some way we can leverage that investment for the long term, and if it returns to a parking lot, the answer I think is is no, unless you want to have uh, elaborate uh, outside toilets. And the toilet situation is getting more complicated because now the firemen would like to have a a, a bathroom inside the uh, apparatus that covers the equipment because when they come back from a fire there's a decontamination process that they have to go through and they wanted to have a bathroom facility in that in addition to the bathroom in the living quarters so it's a complicated thing uh, with lots of problems to make it all work <laughs> You know, Gene, uh, you know, given that, uh, uh, you know, I, my wife, you know, Kathy, uh, and, and Jeff, you've met my wife, Kathy Cole, by the way. Um, you know, this, this whole fire station uh, library uh, project has just been, you know, screwed up. I mean, it's out of sequence. I mean, there have been all sorts of burrs. And, and is there any way to make sure that, um, just for this temporary fire station that things don't get screwed up? There is a committee now, and uh, the committee is the committee's job is to make sure the firemen are safe 
in the facility that they're moving into. That's the way I look at serving on that committee, that that's my job. And there will be a pot, there will be a pot of money to build both. And so I think that they should spend the amount of money it takes to make the firemen safe for two or three years and to have them a functioning fire department. And and be able to, uh, yes, put fires out, get to fires and put fires out in an efficient manner, yes. Right, and come back and, and do all of the decontamination stuff that they have to do in a safe environment. Yeah, yeah. so... Jim, I, I, you know, I think, I think, uh, I think that is definitely beyond the scope of this committee to. Uh, oh, it is. Try to do that. But do you want to hear the rest of the scope of this committee? Yes. You know, the the parking lot next to the fire station is going away. Yes. Yeah. And they're supposed to start June, July, break. You know, have the official groundbreaking for that. And then one of the proposals to the Capital Improvements Committee is that the parking lot behind Wilson's, the part of the parking lot that is closest to the Wilson's parking lot will become a skate park. Mm. Okay. All at the same time? Yes. And I said to the mayor, you know, mayor, uh, we don't, have any place for all of the construction workers to park. And Not she's if, if the courthouse opens up next summer. Right. And she said it's not a problem. They have it all figured out. They have a parking plan and that the parking lot that goes to the current fire station will be used for loading and unloading and parking for the construction workers. And I said, I don't know that that's going to work out exactly. And she said, we've got it all figured out. And I said, well, where are the people going to park who are working on the new fire station down at the open air market? And she said, well, they can park in the parking garage. It's got plenty of space. So those of us who have been on this committee and have seen that there may not always be enough space, <laughs> We'll have to just wait and see how this all works out, I guess. Because it, so they're talking about taking away the Hope Street lot and the fire station lot and part of the C and D lot. Right. How, because do we, we don't know? Need... How, do you know how many spaces we're we losing? Then we're lo we're losing more than the parking garage. Right. We're losing four hundred spaces just off the top of my head. Um. Yeah, two hundred. Yeah, almost four hundred spaces, and right. that's not even counting the C and D lot, and what they're planning on taking out of there. Which we just redid that lot. I'm not sure why we would want to change it and rip that all up to put in a and, skate park. Yeah, seems like there might. Seems like I know they've been looking for a place for the skate park for a long time, but. It seems like they should be able to find a better spot. I'm, I'm just reporting uh, to you that no one is interested in our opinion. That's my bottom line of this report. You know, I, 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 you know we, we've had the, the, this sort of conversation in, in lots of different places, and I can't help wondering, the minute somebody says, we have it under control, I say, would you mind if I make note of what you have under control? And and then, you know, basically use it as blackmail. I, I mean, it, it just seems to me that that stops an awful lot of the uh, the hooey that goes on uh, with politicians, you know, or people that think they're politicians. So should we request the parking, um, the plan that they have so we can review it? I yeah. think that would be a good thing for us to do, don't you think? As we are the parking commission, we should know what their plan is. <laughs> Half of our our uh, jurisdiction. So that's and the then, that's yeah. the the parking plan for the library construction, library the, and temporary fire station construction. Right. 
and, and skate park. And the skate park idea, where they're planning to put that on this c and I mean, they do realize that COVID's probably gonna be coming to an end next summer, all the restrictions, and all of a sudden, the courthouse, which has not been using anywhere near the uh, amount of parking that they usually do, when they start bringing in juries, <laughs> there's going to be a huge influx. And then you've got all the office people that haven't been using their offices are going to start using their offices again. They're going to be, you know, going like, where's all our parking? And where and did it go? And the construction workers, remembering, remember when they were building the courthouse, how we had to worry about where to park the construction workers for the courthouse? And then uh, yeah, they'd be yeah, parking all over the streets park. and... Yeah, well, you know, Gene, that, that you guys just should have had the construction workers work uh, at night. <laughs> yeah, that would have gone over really well. Now that I don't live in the neighborhood, I don't care. <laughs> okay, so I'll I'll do that. Um, get them to. Uh, I'll I'll try to get the re parking plan. From the mayor's office. Um, anything else around around the temporary fire station or the library? Now, is the um, 2021 permit pricing and all that's been set up, right? I believe I believe so. Um, let's see. And, and you know it's one price and you can park anywhere that's permit. If you have a permit. Which seems. I th I've always kind of I've, I've always kind of felt that's the way it should be, but. Um, so your wish comes true. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and we'll see. We'll see because how many permits are there and how many spaces are there? Well, they're selling a few more permits than there are spaces because they can't see that that will be a problem. But but how many spaces are they calculating? That I don't know. If there's no permit spaces in the in the Hope Street lot and or the fire the, station in the fire station lot. And some of the C and D lots now turned into a skate park. Where just exactly where are there going to be any any spots left? What's your point, George? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. There's there's something to do with a hundred pounds of something that's going to be put in a fifty pound bag. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, yeah, I, I think a. Better bike paths in downtown. We really need to move on that. And uh, B, better better bus stops that um, they actually have sidewalks next to them would probably help. Well, one thing that it might help a little bit is I think that moving forward at post COVID, fewer people, our daytime population will drop a little bit in all downtowns because people won't be coming to work every day like they used to. They'll be coming three days a week or one day a week or not at all. Yeah, but people will be coming coming in and going shopping, eating, you know, so I, I you know. The, Which the has never been the, the, yes, and that's never been a problem as far as, as far as capacity is concerned, right? The, those kind of yeah. things. Uh, so if, if, you know, at nighttime, if people start going to concerts again at um, or the arts block or whatever it's called now, um, then your the, the parking garage will satisfy that. Um, so, you know, one one thing that occurs to me, uh, you know, given uh, all the spaces that are going to go away, and uh, you know where we're going to put permit parking, uh, we need a map that uh, people when they get their permits will know where they are most likely to find spaces. Or, or where there are permit spaces that they could park in. 
Um, otherwise, well, think, you'll have people gonna, driving uh, around purposely, purposefully, uh, without reason. I think we're going to have to think about Franklin Street again as being a permit permit only parking on that street so that we can handle all the permits. Well, I believe they said Prospect and Prospect Ave and Prospect Street will be resident only parking. If yeah, I, I said I said Franklin. Wouldn't that be? Isn't that the street next to the post office? Yes. Yeah. Um. I. I think. That'll take some. I think we need. I think we need to. Uh, so, I think part of the problem is that the current permit spaces are are empty a lot of the time, mm -hmm. and yeah, so because... we're not fully utilizing all of our parking. Um, and so we may have to, rather than doing what, uh, George, you were talking about, it may be that you would have a, uh, rather than a permit necessarily, you'd have a, a cheaper and more convenient way to pay for bulk parking time. Um, and, you know, so the, the rather like, it's like a, a permit, except you can park anywhere that there's a, a spot and you, and you just have to use the, Whatever, whatever uh, system works. So maybe, maybe that's a, a that's part of a, a future solution to think so about. Are you saying do away with the distinction between permit spaces and hourly spaces? Correct. Yeah. Well, or, or, or at least, or or at least, like here's here's your here's your uh, one hour spaces. Permits cannot use them. Here's your four and eight hour spaces. Permits can use those. That would make sense to me. And that's the way it was that way at one point. Um, well, it, it isn't the uh, aren't the, the uh, people who are giving out tickets. Uh, they'll know who has permits because we're, we're not issuing permits anymore. I mean, stickers or tags or anything like that, right? Um, I, I'm I'm not sure, but they it will definitely be tied to the license plates. And if it's in license plates in any way, then in order to do in order to do the park mobile, whatever it's called, um, yeah. they that that would come up on there as well. Yeah, but but and I, I guess uh, the reason that I ask that is uh, that if a permit holder parks in a regular parking spot uh, before the uh, the, the meter person issues the ticket. Uh, they have to enter the, uh, you know, the, the license number, and that's when they'll find out this is a permit, and they just don't right. ticket them. Right. Yeah. No. The the, the solutions are easy, and, and and it's not a problem. Even the old system was easy. They just look at like, oh, this person has something hanging on there. They're, yeah. they're allowed to be there. Um, and so when the when the parking garage was going up and there was a lot of concern about the where parking garage and the and the uh, courthouse was being built at the same time there was a lot of concern about parking and we ended up with that the other system which i never particularly liked is so, do you think that is it possible to and it, the parking garage can only be you can only book that monthly you can't book that annually right could if, if we're merging all this stuff anyway, and we don't really know what's going to happen, there's going to be some chaos injected into the system. The more you can flatten it all out, the better. It seems to me. Like I, I would say that it, it you sell parking on a monthly basis. That's a universal spot that's tied to your license plate, and you can park anywhere that is not an hourly spot, including the garage. Park at the top of the garage. It's the same difference as parking in the, the. And then if we if if it if it creates a problem, you know we can solve the problem, but. To make it as simple as humanly possible as a starting point might be, and and also to avail as many spaces as possible, so you're not constraining one space from another. You, you kind of make the most of the full supply that you have to work with. Yeah, I don't know. What, I don't remember what Danny said about that. I think we, we brought that up last time, and I don't know if there's a if she was working on a technical solution to that or not. I think that the parking garage costs more than the regularly permitted spots. And the thing to 
uh, keep that income stream. Yeah, so that, that could be. So that, that could be a premium then, I guess I, I would. Uh, yeah, anyway, so that's another. It, it also begs the question, what's the parking plan? And then for us, right. Is there something we can think about bigger picture that accommodates the, what's going on now and sort of anticipates what will work better in the future? Yeah, so I think I think what I'm hearing and I think what we should be saying is, yeah, hi, we need we need a parking plan for the construction construction workers. And hey, if you don't have it already, someone really needs to put together a parking plan for uh, what's going to happen with everyone, the permits and the parking. We, we want to see those numbers. Where, how many people, how many permits we're talking, how many spaces we're talking, what capacity we kind of have some guess of expecting. Aren't they putting all this stuff on sale right now? Mm -hmm. The permits? Yes. So. Well, the details you're asking for, Bass, uh, I mean, we've already heard that the, the, the mayor has that under control. Uh, no, I think that was more for the, you know, Gene, is, is that true? Yes, the mayor has it under control. Don't worry about it. Okay. <laughs> maybe, maybe we could see what, what it is that she is has under control. I think that would be a useful thing because it cranks into what are we going to do with the parking? You know, permit parking and stuff like that. And And maybe she does not want to have a parking commission. Maybe she's got it all figured out. We're, we're in the charter, so. <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> it's a lot of fun to get together every month and, and talk to all of you. I enjoy it. <laughs> enjoy it. Yeah, well, maybe we can make uh, Mark ex officio because he clearly has nothing better to do than to watch us. <laughs> uh, okay, so what else here? Have so we covered all the points? We've covered all the points in the agenda, so anything else? Oh, yeah, yeah we, we talked about the fastenal situation. Yeah, so... Um, Mark had sent some, uh, Paul had sent something out about that. Um, so So he said he was going to add no parking signs that we talked about as immediate re remedy to Kenwood because it, it seemed like it was it was a problem. So, and then he said we can remove the signs um, if if we decide a different direction would be appropriate. I I don't know if that's happened. Have, Jim, have you seen any? Uh, no parking, additional no parking signs? Um, I, I saw no parking on grass signs that look fairly new. But I think I think the issue is, uh, this, this is not an RV. This is a big mother camper that's towed behind a, a big mother truck. And, and the real issue is in order for him to put his camper next to his garage, he's got to back that thing in, which means... Uh, you know, a, a lot of maneuvering. And if anybody's on, on the other side of the road, opposite Fastenal, and there are people that are parked too close to his driveway, uh, you know, he, he'll never get in. Mm -hmm. Right. So, uh, you know, I, I, you know, the, the no parking signs may, the way they're cited right now, may in fact, um, prevent the guy from doing what he needs to do to park it, uh, ironically. So so what, what Paul said was, um, Brian Bird has had more issues with not being able to exit his driveway, even with a small vehicle, not just an RV recently. Um, he has had to um, 
contact the police department in order to have cars moved so he can leave his house. Um, I've, Paul says, I've seen it and it's, and it's pretty bad. Um, so I'm going to recommend to the mayor that we add no parking signs um, along Kenwood as immediate remedy. From from so, the uh, the corner up to Fastenal, or or you know yeah. Day. So there's already there's already parking no parking signs on the uh, eastern side end of Kenwood. You know, like Fastenal down to the to Federal Street, if I remember correctly from last time. And so it would be from Fastenal to Davis. So he said he was going to recommend to the mayor to do that and put them in. Um, and I don't know how often you go there or if you've looked recently, Jim. I will, uh, you know, I can, it's it's just one of our walking routes. So I can, I can do that, you know, anytime you need it or, you know, whenever I, I'm there. Okay. Um, do, uh, last time we said, um, And so we we only had we only had Paul as our uh, commission as our liaison for one meeting. That's kind of that's kind of sad. <laughs> Very inconsiderate of him to quit his job, wasn't it? Oh, I hope we didn't cause it. No, I. I thought. Yeah, we I, I, I like I liked him. Okay. I, I'm I'm just wondering, uh, given that uh, we we're we're close to. Uh, fasten all and uh, this neighbor. Uh, what would happen if I I talked to him and had him uh, describe what the problem is, so that r rather than just taking pictures of cars parked and no parking signs to see if um, you know there's there's a, a different workaround. I mean, I'm I'm happy to to knock on the door. I mean, we we you know we talk to strangers all the time, right? And disobey our parents. Uh, Admonition. Um, uh, you know, Jim. I, yeah, I I think that that is your one hundred percent right as a a commission member to do that, and I I I personally would have no problem with that. Yeah. What What is the the, the guy's name again? Um, according according to Paul, it is. Uh, uh, Brian Bird. Okay. Is that B Y or or B I? Uh, B R I A N. Uh, Bird is B I R D. Okay. Thank you. <clears throat> okay. I'll do do that in the next couple of weeks. Un unless you want me to do it sooner. No. I, I... I think I think the the question is should we recommend to the mayor since Paul since Paul is no longer around to um, put in no parking signs for the time being because we can always remove them. Don't don't aren't the signs you know don't they drill a hole fill them with concrete and they're a real pain in the neck to pull out or what what I don't they, think they fill them with concrete. What they do in the winter is they use a bucket and they put concrete uh, in the bucket and put the no parking sign in there. But I think, you know, I think that he's he's already buckled up his uh, camper. So he, he ain't going nowhere, it would appear, until the well, spring. According to, according to Paul, it was more than the camper. The camper, at this point, it's the cars, just getting a car in and out of the driveway was difficult. All right. Well, I'll okay. check it out with him. Okay. Great. Okay. I think that's the uh, last thing then. Another question that I would have is just a note we can put on there. I think they're still starting to get started or not even there yet, but the Main Street redesign, I'm particularly interested in where that goes. Mm -hmm. At one point, we okay. had to check in on that. So I don't know where that stands, but if we had a role, I'd, I'd like a role in that conversation somehow. Right. I think it's so in our purview. We, so and, I, hope, 
I will put it into the minutes as um, as something we would like to talk about. How about how about this, Jeff? I'll put it on the in the agenda for next meeting, and um, see if we can get a report, an update on that from the mayor. Yeah, and, okay. and we would also like input into the uh, parking lot where the marijuana facility is. What is that parking lot called? They're getting ready to pave that one. Uh, the Legion lot? Yeah, the Legion lot. Yeah. And Legion. I think we sh would like input into that too. To see their designs. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, anything else for next agenda? Okay. No. Um, do are, are it's the eighth now? I presume we're not going to do one. Is it supposed to be our January meeting? Um, does the third Tuesday still work? I keep um, Bill. Keep saying he's set it up as a recurring meeting on the calendar um, with agenda I send, but send, but it never, it never happens. Um, I've had the same problem with planning and construction. Okay, so <laughs> um, it's an office problem, not an us problem. Okay, um, so yeah, and then and then like it's it's usually like that. That Saturday, I look at my uh, calendar for the next week and realize I'm sort of parking traffic, and then I can't get it on there by then. Right. Um, so yeah, I, I will. I will try to make sure that that's on the calendar. So the sixteenth. Well, this would be. We could do the sixteenth currently. What our Jan current you're, schedule you're talking has January. Been. Right? I'm talking January the sixteenth. That that's a Saturday. Oh, um, I think it would be the twenty sixth. Nineteenth. Nineteenth would be the third. That'd be the third. Have we been doing the third or the fourth? Oh no, it fourth. Fourth. You're right. right. Have, so I have be, that'd be the twenty sixth. Right. Okay, I was in the wrong month. Sorry. It's okay. I, and, I feel like I've been in the wrong month for <laughs> a year now. <laughs> And is it going to be the uh, at five or five thirty? Um, five five normally works for me fine. Um, I don't know if, if other people have a preference. Should does it make sense to uh, put something on your calendar for the twelfth so that you can uh, bug uh, the powers that be to get that on the yeah. calendar? You know, and if yes, it's I will, here, I will do that. Yeah, okay. And maybe a, a follow up if it's not there on uh, the 14th, 15th. <clears throat> you know, if you use Google Calendar, you can always use the send later function and oh, right is that a send, is that an automatic send email. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> He doesn't have to know. Uh, great. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. Um, OK, is there anything else? All right, I want to call this meeting to an end. Uh, nice, nice seeing everybody. Uh, you need a motion to adjourn. Uh, <laughs> a motion to adjourn. Oh, yeah, let's be formal now. OK, all in favor? <laughs> Bye. Bye. <laughs> okay. Bye.